olfactory epithelium. Hey John, did you know that I've lost my sense of smell temporarily when I had COVID-19? No way, Susan. Are you serious? This condition is known as anosmia. According to researchers, anosmia is caused by olfactory dysfunction and it can persist in 7 to 8% of cases after contracting COVID-19. Massive disruption of the olfactory epithelium is most likely to result in anosmia. Olfactory what? The olfactory epithelium! Are you saying that damage to those hairy things could result in loss of smell? The hair-like structures are cells. They are called the olfactory cilia. Let me give you some information about the olfactory epithelium. The olfactory epithelium is a pseudostratified neuroepithelium. In other words, a cellular tissue formed by a single layer of cells. Yes, I know, it looks like the tissue has many layers, but it only has one. The olfactory epithelium is located at the upper area of the nasal cavity, along with olfactory nerves, bulb, and tracts. The olfactory epithelium is formed by three main cells. The basal cells, which are stem cells that give rise to the olfactory receptor cells. The supporting cells, which provide metabolic and physical support for the olfactory cells. The olfactory receptor cells with the olfactory cilia the hair-like structure, which are receptor neurons responsible for the detection of odorants. Hey, Susan. So, how does the perception of smell happen? That's very simple, John. Every time someone enters the elevator with a strong perfume scent early in the morning, you automatically inhale the odorant. You have no choice, right? So when that happens, the odorant, in this case perfume scent, will travel through the nasal cavity. The odorant will serve as a chemical stimulant that will be converted into electrical signal. But before that happens, the odorant dissolves in the mucus and then it binds to the cilia. The binding of the odorant to the cilia results in action potential, in other words, electrochemical signaling. These impulses are carried by receptor cells to the olfactory bulb, which is located above the olfactory epithelium. From the olfactory bulb, the impulses travel to areas of the brain associated with processing, modulation, and interpretation. The most important cells of the olfactory epithelium are called olfactory sensory neurons, OSN. But these cells are very vulnerable to pathogens, virus and bacteria, because of their location in the nose. Although OSN life is not long, there is some hope. Mm, here we go again. Go away, ugly monsters! The good news is that the olfactory epithelium regeneration is real. In order to maintain certain functions working well, the body will engage in mechanisms that promote cell regeneration. The formation of new neurons in the olfactory epithelium continues throughout adulthood. Conditions associated with loss of smell. Some clinical conditions can cause anosmia, loss of smell, or hyposmia, reduced ability to detect odor. For example, genetic disorders, head trauma, post-viral olfactory disorders. That means that we will experience some loss of olfaction at some point in life. I was not planning for that, Sue. No one plans for that. John? Smell 
is a very important sense. It helps us to identify situations that can be harmful for us. For example, burning items in the house or bad food, which can be toxic for humans if consumed. Smell can also activate our best childhood memories, for example, the smell of our mom's food. For good or for bad, we need to smell. In the olfactory, epithelium is the organ responsible for perceiving smell. Did you know? Researchers examine how the odor experienced by parents can have a lasting impact on offspring. For this experiment, they exposed a female mouse to a fear conditioning, shock, associated with an odor, acetophenone, before conception. Results revealed that the mother's exposure to odor associated with shock prior to conception had an impact on the following two generations.